family and Merry Merry Christmas. We just want to say I hope you have a very very Merry blessed Christmas today in spite of the year we've had, in spite of not being together for Christmas. Let's remember keep the Christ in Christmas and enjoy the service with us today. We look forward to seeing you in the new year but for now here we go. Thank you Lynette. Well, we're really excited today that we're going to be joining up with the Elan family across the country. We're going to see what's been going on and it's really great that we can do this today. So, shall we pray this morning before we start? Father God, I thank you so much for today. Thank you so much that you sent Jesus into the world because you loved us so much. Lord, I just pray that as we celebrate this day, celebrate Jesus, Father God, I pray you'll come and have your way wherever we are in our homes, um, at work, wherever we are, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that you'll come and Lord, we will really feel your presence with us. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Come and have your way in our lives, Lord, in, 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 our, in our families, um, in, in, in everywhere we are, Lord Jesus. We just want to invite you, Father, and we just thank you so much for everything that you've done. And we just want to celebrate you and love you. In your loving name I pray, Amen. 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 Thank you, Esther. Well, we're going to be going to see Reverend Mark Greenwood in a few moments. He's going to be leading us in our service today. Um, we've got a few special guests that's going to be coming on. So please join in and God bless you on this Christmas day. Different than every other day you've experienced for Christmas, but today let's just give thanks to our Lord Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Mark Greenwood. Welcome to Elim Christmas time. I'm really excited because I am stood outside the Christmas shop in Stratford-upon-Avon. It's open all year round. It's Christmas all year round. How amazing is that? In today's service, you're going to begin to hear about the truth of how Christmas isn't just something for the 25th of December, it's something for all year round. My dear friend, Canon J. John, one of the best communicators of the Christmas message and the Christian message, is going to be speaking to us. He's got some of his friends who are contributing to today's service also. Sir, yes, that's right, you've heard it right, Cliff Richard is going to bring a Christmas greeting and tell us a little bit of what Christmas means to him. And then we've got David Suchet, that's right, Inspector Poirot is going to read to us uh, very familiar words from the Bible. A very well-known Christian singer-songwriter who writes many of the songs that are sung in churches today. He's written a special Christmas song, he's called Matt Redman and then J. John will come and speak to us. I hope you really enjoy this service today. I'm often asked, what does Christmas mean to you? Well, I mean, for me, it means different things because when I was a child, I was born in India, we were separated, the family were all over the country and Christmas to me as a kid meant I'm gonna see my aunts and uncles, my favorite cousins, and of course we got gifts. But that Christmas was strictly once a year. I've got a feeling now that Christmas should be part of our life all the time because it represents something very special. In the mid-60s, I got very interested in spirituality. That's the time I became a Christian. And what I recognized was that the miracle of birth still fascinates us. Just a baby being born is an absolute miracle. Jesus' birth was a stupendous miracle that somebody that was a spiritual divine creature became like one of us. So for me now, Christmas is every day of the year. Every time I pray, I pray, I think of Jesus, I think of God. Easter is also important, but I always find it difficult to feel triumphant because he died. And I know he had to die for us, but for me it's still today, Christmas is now an everyday part of my life. And so it gives me great pleasure to wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and let it last all the year round. song that rang so sweet and clear when heaven's light and music fell and mercy found us here glory in the highest and on the earth be peace glory 
glory to God the angels sing. He came to tell the Father's love, His goodness and His grace. To show the brightness of His smile, the glory of His face. So glory in the highest, and on the earth be peace. Glory to God, your children sing. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, for all eternity, oh, His name shall be. He came to lift the weary ones, give peace and perfect rest, to take away our burdens and to give a glorious gift. So glory in the highest, and on the earth be peace. Glory to God, the world will sing. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For all eternity, oh, His name shall be. Christmas. But remember, the first Christmas wasn't perfect. It was miraculous, but messy. The truth that Jesus came to earth is the proof 
that God cares. The story of Christmas is the story of God's relentless love for us. Jesus did not come to make God's love possible, but to make God's love visible. Christmas is the time and place where God pulls back the curtain so we can see his face. Christmas is the answer to our questions. Where is God? Who is God? God couldn't have made himself bigger to impress us, so he made himself smaller to attract us. Christmas means God with us. The Christmas message is that there is hope. The only true historical reason for celebrating Christmas is as the birthday of Jesus Christ. But nobody celebrates the birthday of a dead person. It is because Jesus is alive that there can be a true celebration of his birthday. One of the things I really like about this season are school nativity plays. And there was one infant school where there was one boy who was desperate to play the part of Joseph. And the day arrived when the teacher announced all the starring roles, but he wasn't chosen to play Joseph. And he was very, very upset. But he did get the part of the innkeeper, but he didn't want to be the innkeeper. Anyhow, the day arrived when the school presented their annual Christmas production to the entire school, all the families and all the friends. And then you get to that point where Mary and Joseph arrive at the innkeeper's door and they knock on the door. The door opens, the innkeeper comes to the door. Joseph says, can my wife Mary and I, can we come in for the evening? And the innkeeper said, she can come in, but you can't. I wanted to be Joseph. There are many different versions of Christmas. And because there are many different versions of Christmas, it is good for us every Christmas time to stop and to go back to the original script. Sir David Suchet will now read from the original script. Hello, I'm David Suchet, and I'm absolutely delighted to be reading this wonderful passage of scripture for this Christmas service. The particular passage is taken from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11, and you'll all know it. It's the story of the wise men. But I want you to listen to it as though you've never heard it before, because there's so much in it, and see what we can rediscover together. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. 
Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In the original script, which David Suchet read for us, we heard there of a group of people known as the wise men. Now, I do have to confess as a man that those two words, wise men, don't always go together. I wonder what would have happened if they were wise women. Well, I think if they were wise women, they would have asked for directions and arrived there on time. They probably would have brought a casserole, they would have cleaned out the stable, they would have helped with the delivery, and they would have brought far more practical presents. But the original script says the wise men came, bowed down, and gave Jesus gifts. And they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, why? Why gold? Why frankincense? Why myrrh? Well, it's symbolism. And the symbolism behind the gifts is very profound. Gold in the Bible is a symbol of kingship. So by giving gold, you are acknowledging their kingship. By bowing down and worshipping them, you're saying, I want to come under your reign and rule. Frankincense in the Bible is a symbol for prayer. It's a symbol of communication. And they had understood that God had come to the earth to communicate with people. And by giving frankincense, they're saying, we want to communicate with you. Myrrh in the Bible is a symbol of burial. It's a symbol of death. And they had understood that the king had come to the earth to do something for us. What's gone wrong? That is a very important and good question to ask. What's gone wrong? What went wrong? The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. Unless we understand the truth of that, we will never understand the solution. I think one of the easiest ways of understanding what's gone wrong is to think of your life and think, what would it be like if it was all projected onto a huge screen? Everything we ever thought, everything we ever said, everything we've ever done. How would you feel if you saw the film of your life in detail? I wouldn't want to see the film of my life because I don't need convincing that I've thought, that I've said, that I've done things that I shouldn't have. The reality is this, all of us, we are all on the naughty list. When we go back to the original script, the word for that is sin. 
Every time we disobey God, every time we break God's commandments, God's principles, God's values, that's called sin. And it disconnects us from God. And it works a little bit like an overdraft in a bank account. If you've got an overdraft and I've got an overdraft, you can't help me and I can't help you. The only one who can help us is someone in credit. Jesus was the only one in credit. If our greatest need was information, then God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need was money, then God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need was technology, then God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need was pleasure, then God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. That's why God sent us a saviour. I remember many years ago when my son Michael was about four years of age, he and I went to buy a present for his mum, my wife Killy, for Mother's Day. And we walked into this store and as we walked into the store, I saw this huge sign that said, do not touch. All breakages must be purchased. I mean, I don't know why I didn't just walk out, but we kept looking around. And before you knew it, both of us, Michael and myself, began touching things. But then I saw it from the corner of my eyes. He knocked something over and I tried to reach out. It felt like slow motion, but whatever it was that he touched fell to the ground and smashed. The manager stood there beside us within seconds and pointed to the sign, do not touch, all breakages must be purchased. And I said, well, I didn't do it, he did it. And I thought, I'll leave Michael in the store to sort it out, I can leave. But there was no way Michael could pay for what was broken. Only his daddy could pay for it. In a similar way, you and I have broken God's commandments, have broken God's values, have broken God's principles, and we can't pay for it. That's why Jesus paid for it. You see, the wise men understood that, and that's why they gave myrrh. Jesus, you've come to die, because by dying on a cross, it was as if he was cashing a check, signed with his own blood, to say, here is the check to clear your overdraft. Jesus Christ purchased for us for forgiveness. The Bible puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. I like the way that Charles Wesley in 1739 expressed it in one of his carols. Hark, the herald, angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. The whole Christmas story 
is a story of reconciliation, of God coming to earth to reconcile us to himself. One Christmas, I was given a gift certificate from a very prestigious store in London. There was an expiry date and I left it on my desk and then within days and weeks it got covered up. And one day while I was clearing my desk I found it but the date had expired. I rang them, I appealed, I begged, and they said, no, it's past, it's past, it's too late. Every single one of us is being offered a gift this Christmas. That gift is Jesus. At Christmas time, when we receive gifts, we don't really need. God offers us a gift we can't do without. The Bible says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The gift of Christmas is Christ. And when we receive Christ, we receive a savior. We receive strength. We receive serenity and we receive security. I sometimes see it a bit like those babuska dolls that when you receive the doll, but inside there's another one and there's another one and there's another one. And in a similar way, that's what we experience when we receive Christ. God never offers us a gift we are not capable of receiving. And I received the gift of Christ on the 9th of February, 1975. And I have been profoundly changed by knowing Jesus. Philip Brooks wrote a beautiful carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And in the final verse of that carol, he wrote these words, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. I think those words, that prayer are just beautiful. And they, that prayer sums up what our response should be to Christmas. The wise men understood it. Jesus is King of Kings, who's come to communicate with us and came into the world, not just at the cradle, but went to the cross to purchase for you and I forgiveness so that we could all experience forgiveness from the past, new life here today, and a hope for the future. The gift of Christmas is Christ. Have you received Christ? If you haven't, why don't you receive Christ today? Receive Christ now. Now, maybe you did but then you got diverted, distracted, maybe even found yourself derailed. Well, why don't you receive Christ afresh today? 
And in a moment, I'm going to pray those words from Phillips Brooks, beautiful, O little town of Bethlehem. And as I pray these words, why don't you pray those words and make this a reality for you today? As I pray the words, if you would like to receive Christ or reaffirm your faith, join with me and pray these words as I personalize them. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on me, I pray. Cast out my sin and enter in. Be born in me today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to me, abide with me, my Lord Emmanuel. Amen. I pray for every one of you that have prayed that prayer now, either for the first time or a way as reaffirming your faith. I pray that you will experience Christ's forgiveness and be set free from the past. I pray that you will experience his presence by his Holy Spirit. I pray that you will experience his peace. I pray that you will experience his well-being in your life. And I pray that you will experience his protection. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I do hope you've been inspired. I hope you've been encouraged. And I want to pray a Christmas prayer over you and for you. May God grant you the light of Christmas, which is faith the warmth of Christmas, which is love, the radiance of Christmas, which is purity, the righteousness of Christmas, which is justice, the belief in Christmas, which is truth, the all of Christmas, which is Christ. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, May God grant you all these things, not just at Christmas, but throughout the new year and all the years to come. Merry Christmas to you all. service. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day and we'll see you in the new year. Happy new year. Lord, I pray you bless us this Christmas day. Lord, be with us, we ask in your mighty name. Lord, I pray for protection over our families. I pray protection over our health. I pray protection over each one of us that are here today watching. Lord, that those that can't make it today, Lord, part of our church family, our friends and our relatives, Lord, and our family. Lord, I pray you bless each one of us in your mighty name. Amen. Yes.